You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 31st, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our goal this week is to think about all the water we've already carried and all the wood we've already chopped. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Happy New Year's, everyone. Happy New Year. Gearing up to chop wood, carry water for another midterm election year. Yeah, well... We built up all these muscles carrying so much goddamn water and chopping so much goddamn wood. But I think we're just almost indestructible, you know? No. No. I think we got a lot of work ahead of us, but yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, when when this week Sarah Palin comes out and says she's like to run for something. Oh, please. She told Eric Bowling. I mean, of, of the two people in the world that you want to have talk about this, Eric Bowling and Sarah Palin. Um. You know, the primaries are going to be lit. The Republican primaries great. are going to be lit. I just want to see Steve Schmidt's phone when she calls him up and says, hey, Steve, guess what I want to do? <laughs> New phone. Who this? Yeah. No. What? No. Hey, Bill Crystal. Remember when we... No, I don't know. So, sorry. Nobody here. Maybe you want to as, talk to my I son. I put in my post about this, I said she wants to run for another office. She can quit. Yeah. <laughs> so she can translate that into a TV reality show. You know. Well, he has, Bill Crystal has her number automatically forwarded to his son-in-law's phone, Matthew Cottonetti. <laughs> oh, yeah, she'll ta- who, he'll take it. <laughs> who wrote the, you know, the glowing biography of like Rebel Without a Clue, the Sarah Palin and how unjust she was treated. That's how he got, you know, to national yeah. attention mm-hmm. is that and the fact that he married Bill Crystal's daughter. There you go. Um, so, you It'll know. get you a job in right wing. Team Evil pays. I'm telling you, it just does. I, I, except, I, except in certain circumstances, which we're going to talk about. Well, and I do, I do want to be one of these holidays, be at the Thanksgiving table where Matthew Continetti asks Bill Crystal to pass the cranberry sauce, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that and just and throws it. it at him. <laughs> Fuck you! No, you're the traitor. Fuck you! I never loved you. And his daughter <laughs> runs crying from the room, and just yeah. yeah, just I want the whole, I want the whole. You know that scene that that um. Norman Rockwell, plenty scene. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. I want that with throwing of knives and <laughs> splashing of drinks and, you know, just barbed wire across the table as the two halves of the Crystal family, who are both terrible, <laughs> just slug it out for supremacy. That's what I want. So next year. Next Adorable. Year. Hey, yes. we, we got a letter. We, we got did. a letter today in the, our email and you said, oh, we're going to read this on the air. Right well, away. Well, before we do that, before we yeah. do that, I want to r- remind everyone, because I know oh. you follow our, our every tick and move with, you know, exquisite precision. Mm-hmm. Next week is our 12th anniversary podcast. 12 years we've been podcasting. Not our second anniversary. No. Not our sixth 12. anniversary. Not our 10th anniversary. 2010. 2010. That's right. 2010. January of 2010. We're going to be recording a show on January 6th. That's right. Hopefully it will be a calmer January 6th than last year. We hope so. <laughs> we sure but, hope uh, so. Yeah, I think there are some commemorations um, on the left of how bad it was. Yeah. But at what you said on Twitter about, you know, there's a market there on the right for J6. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, there's... just double down on the violence and going to jail and whatever else. Yeah. Well, doubling uh, down is what they do, right? I mean, this is this right. is not this is really really old news. It, it, mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. The I don't I'm no longer surprised by the fact that, of course, I think you and I talked about this yesterday as writers. Mm-hmm. When you're writing a story, when mm-hmm. you're writing a novel, and you you come into something called character possession, which is where a character in your story is so vivid and real to you that you you just know where they're going to go and what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. Once you've come to understand the Republican brain well enough to understand it as a form of character in a narrative, nothing about them surprises you anymore because you understand them completely, you know, top to bottom, side to side, you know what they're thinking, why they're going to do it. So yeah, of course they're going to double down on it. Of course they are. And of course, all of the people, all the 
centrists and all the never Trumpers are going to expect shock. Uh, can you believe that these people want to raise flags in commemoration of January 6th? <laughs> oh my God, what happened to civility in this country? And by the way, critical race theory, because, you know. Because why not? None of this uh, surprises us anymore no. because it's, they're, they're all running the same scripts they've always run. Which, backing up a little bit, Sarah Palin in her interview said, I'm not so obsessively partisan that I let that get in the way of doing what's right for the people. For America. <laughs> As a mother and a patriot. You know? No, that's Liz Cheney. Yeah, well, well Palin Cheney 2024. Yeah, Palin Cheney 2024. You know? <laughs> By the way, every, every Never Trump podcast is now the Liz Cheney show. Oh, wonderful! Because they're, they're down to one Republican they can point to without throwing up, they're, and yeah. so and and so every fucking one of these podcasts is now the Liz Cheney show. She's a hero. She's a hero. Why can't you liberals recognize she's a hero? Yes, you're right. She's a hero. And the fifty Democrats are ten times more heroic than she will ever be. Mm -hmm. And the people who've mm -hmm. been saying this for decades, as opposed to minutes, are ten times more heroic than she will ever be. But you can't stand those people, so you can't stand talking about them, except for one of them named Joe Manchin, who you think is the greatest Democrat who ever lived. Yeah, and why? Well, we'll get into that, too. Yeah. Uh, so let's read this letter yeah. from listener Peter, who, mm -hmm. when we got this email today, we decided, oh, we got to we got to really open the show with this. Uh, Peter writes, I occasionally listen to the Talking Feds, F-E-D-S podcast. Mm -hmm. Hosted by Larry Littman. And Larry Littman, we know him from MSNBC. He's an attorney, uh, usually explaining the law to people. Uh, uh -huh. uh, and he's usually talking about legal matters and so forth. But sometimes he invites political types. And this week, he really worked to confirm Drift Glass's opinion about the middle ground. Yeah. Larry Littman had on Bill Crystal, Michael Steele, and Christine Todd Whitman. Yeah, yeah. It was painful to listen, but they remarkably maintained the no history before 2015. Can't wait to see who he has <laughs> to do Dems in 2022 besides David Frum. Yeah. yeah. You can predict, as you say. Yes. As you say, Drift Glass, mm -hmm. you can predict what's going to happen next. And David Frum will have a three-day growth of beard. <laughs> I know this for a fact because he Very always has a three day. Corey, um, quaffed, right? He, he, from, the, from the quaffed. 90s or 80s and 90s, he has uh, what they were selling back then called the Miami device, yeah. which was a, a shaving <laughs> tool that would give you give you an eighth of an inch of stubble every day. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, that's David Frum's look. So uh, listener Peter concludes by saying, I'd rather be a one percenter contributing to pro left podcast than a three percenter trying to destroy our country. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, we Peter. appreciate uh, your going behind uh, the lines of centrism and taking a peek at that for us. And now I have to go over and listen to that because I'm a, you know, oh, I'm yeah. a connoisseur at this and, point. Well, <laughs> you know, and, and let's face it too. It's, it's usually a source material for a post that you it will is. write. Yeah, it is. And, you know, 16 years ago, Going on 17 years ago when I started podcast or sorry, I started blogging, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the uncovered territory was talking about like people like David Brooks and Andrew Sullivan and Tom Friedman. Um, and I just sort of decided that would be one of my areas of expertise. And I became America's greatest David Brooksologist. Now there's yeah. other ones out there who are very good and who I tip my hat to. Um, but it was a beat that nobody could figure out why the fuck is this guy? Oh, oh, I get it. Oh my God. You know, it's like, trust me when I tell you this, there's some, there's some funky shit going on here that will tell you all you need to know by proxy about everything going on inside the, the minds of the elite on the right. Mm -hmm. The people who never leave the Estella corridor, but have lots of opinions about the rest of the country, which they have yeah. never, ever looked. They've never, and who have never no idea really what's going on. It. Yeah. Yeah. And have no idea what's going on inside their own party. Um, so, Trust me when I tell you that connoisseurship of a certain kind of centristy, never Trumpy podcast um, writing will pay big dividends. <laughs> in the mm -hmm. end, I, it, it mm -hmm. seems, but already it's like who got there first when it came to the Lincoln Project? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. three or four of us. Like, oh shit, yeah. they really are yeah. a bunch of 
skeezy grifters who who still are out there. They're still cranking. Oh, yeah. They're still raising yeah. money, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it catching these things early and seeing where they're going is sort of part of the job of the what I consider the liberal blogger. Mm-hmm. I know there's a few right. only a few of us out there left, but everyone's covering everything else. And we're the ones who are sort of looking over the horizon going, what's coming next? What are these people up to? Where Where is this weird trend that everyone seems to be on board with heading? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're right more often than we're wrong, which makes us, you know, well, I, I, love, I love that time, period of time where Charlie Pierce decided to hop on the David Brooks train. Yes. And did. his comment thread was immediately filled with comments about, you know, pretending to be drift glass is no way to go through life, son. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No and he's offense. really nice about it. He's like, oh, you know, I'm just walking on the path you trod, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. I mean, he was Which, really nice about it. He's but. very sweet. And and this is this is all one writer can ever ask, no matter how obscure they are, is right. that if you're going to suddenly discover um something that they've been writing about for a decade and you find out that somebody's gotten there first, it's and fine. did a good job. It's I fine. mean and did a good job. It's yeah, fine right. to to there's plenty of room. But pretend it's this room in the garden for everybody, yeah. but don't pretend it's your garden. No. Right. And that's right. my entire brief against our new allies is pretending right. that we don't exist. Right. Or that the right. liberals that that they're that the years they spent listening to Rush Limbaugh and listening to his imitators and listening to the Weekly Standard and listening to the National Review, all the shitty caricatures and awful cartoons and the libtards and the feminazi bullshit that even this even the most elite Republicans totally swallowed as whole as whole mm-hmm. um that's they still believe we're that they yeah. still believe in the caricatures they soaked up even though they've rejected much of that propaganda they're, they're still scarred by it and they still can't get past the fact that agreeing with liberals acknowledging liberals are right acknowledging liberals are right before they were is is too icky for them to contemplate they mm-hmm. just can't do it so they invent these weird baroque excuses for why liberals are still wrong why both sides are still bad why we can't have liberals on our podcast to talk about shit we don't want to talk about. And going back to the letter today, why history began in 2015. Right. Because none then, of their bullshit. And then, and then the title of the uh, Lincoln Project podcast. Oh, yes. This yes. week. This week. Yeah. Was. Yeah, they're, they're sick of being right. They're sick of they're, being right. We're sick, sick of being, being right. right. <laughs> yes. Wow. You've been at this for two fucking years and you're sick of being right. You know, we tell people we have been shouting into the abyss for I don't know how long. And people just don't <laughs> listen to us, and we tell them like, "Fuck you!" You know what? You know who would really help you out in this in this regard? Actually, Liberal talking bloggers. to liberals. But you can't stand us. I can't imagine Rick Wilson saying, "You know, Drift Class, could you give me some insight into whatever the fuck is going it's on?" Being here? right for fifteen years means, and nobody can't, wants to listen to you. <laughs> can't stand it. They can't stand us. They have trained themselves. This is the this is the baggage they carried over from the right. They cannot stand actual liberals. If you listen to, I, I, I'm not kidding. You listen to any of these Never Trump podcasts, they're they're horrified at Democrats trying to govern as Democrats. Yeah. Oh they're, yeah. Their their hero is Joe fucking Manchin. Yeah. And they they just they can't give that up. And that will, in the end, they will stab us in the back. And and they're they're pretty clear about that. They're like, you know, I'm still a conservative. I'm still I'm still a Republican. I haven't given up my shitty beliefs. It's just this temporary period when. You so you what you want is you want me to give you our eighty million voters to add to your twelve hundred listeners, right? And right. that's your alliance now, right? right. How about you and, join and our? You alliance? will be, get paid to be the consultant to advertise to those people, right? All eighty-one million Democrats will listen to you, <laughs> Rick Wilson. Yes, well, and, right. And and there's a that this very day I I wasn't going to do this, but I, I was listening to the Mona Charon podcast. Mm-hmm. And there's this one amazing sentence uh, she and Bill Galston, who's the, you know, no labels asshole on that podcast. And they've just gotten done beating up Democrats for being Democrats and praising Joe Manchin. And Mona Charon says, I'm just amazed that Democrats aren't just, you know, getting down on their knees every day and thanking God that they have a Democratic senator in West Virginia. What's wrong with that analysis? And Bill Galston swings in with most of them don't thank God for anything. And they all cracked up because, you know, we're a bunch of godless heathens who don't appreciate uh-huh. the fact these assholes came to our party. And you know what I wrote today, just today? I'm amazed that Mona Sharon and the rest of these dyspeptic, dispossessed conservative autocrats aren't getting down on their knees every day and thanking their God 
that the Democratic Party they have worked their whole lives maligning and obstructing still has enough firepower to stand up to the Republican monster they spent their whole lives creating. Mm-hmm. How about you by, get down your by the fucking, skin of our fingernails? Why, how about you We're get down your fucking on to knees democracy and yes. thank God for the Democratic Party? How about yep. you get out there and knock some fucking doors instead of sitting on your asses bitching that we're not doing what you want us to do? How about you thank God we exist and you get off your asses right. and go do something to get some Democrats elected? Because well, who no, we each Trump twice? Yeah. Not your party, Mona Charon. No. But they're sick of being right, Blue Gal. Sick of being right. Just sick of being right. All right. Moving on. Moving on. (laughs) This is a complete digression. Our notes are now in shreds. It means nothing. No, they're not. No, they're not. We have all silver bullets and no gun, as Ted Green said on Twitter this week. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the the messaging. This is what you wanted to talk about, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to remind people, every time you hear people waving their hands and going, why won't Democrats message better? Why would they suck at messaging? Democrats need to message better. They've got great stuff. Why don't they talk about it more? Plenty of Democrats talk, and then we talk good shit. But as Ten Grain said, we have all the silver bullets, and we have no guns. Mm-hmm. We have no means of delivering it. There is no liberal Fox News. There is no liberal Regnery Press. There is no liberal AM radio, coast to coast, delivering propaganda 24 hours a day. So you can, we can have the best message in the world, but it's stranded at the dock because there's nothing to carry it out to the people. Mm-hmm. And I would like to remind our dear friends out there that in 2010, our craven political press responded to unified Republican obstruction and nonstop lying with what? Republicans are bad. Republicans are stop. No. It was, why won't Obama lead? Why, 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 is, why is Obama letting the Republicans do this? Why doesn't he unify the country? Because it's always the liberals' fault. Mm-hmm. A decade later, the Republican Party's only gotten worse, only gotten more craven, more obnoxious, more obstructive. What does the same political press do? Why won't Democrats message better? Mm-hmm. It's always mm-hmm. the Democrats' fault. It's always there's, – there's, no one on the right is ever responsible for anything. They're a force of nature. Might as well not even talk about them. It's up to the Democrats to somehow figure out a way to figure out a way to figure out a way to get the message out to the people. Okay, how would you suggest we do that? Would Mm -hmm. you suggest perhaps the mainstream press that keeps sucking Joe Manchin's dick maybe start talking about all the good things Democrats? No, no, that's not our job. Our job isn't to carry Democrats' message. Okay, so the mainstream press is not going to carry Democrat message. Fox News is not going to carry it. Hate Radio is not going to carry it. Who's going to carry it exactly? And to where? What people do you know that watch Freedom TV who are listening mm-hmm. to Stephanie Miller? I mean, mm-hmm. I, liberals yeah. do, but that carries the message to the same people who already believe it. Right. What right. machinery? And you know what? There is a mechanism for carrying Democratic messaging to people who don't listen to us. It's called the Never Trump <laughs> podcast. If they spent half the, as much time celebrating the Democratic Party and carrying Democratic message as they do bitching, the mm-hmm. Democrats is, smell bad and the food is, here isn't nice and it used to be great and we used to be awesome. Then we might make some headway, but they're well, not going to do I that. Think, I think we're doing, we Democrats are doing a tremendous job with messaging in terms of getting our people to Instagram, yes. to the Jimmy yes. Kimmel show, Fair to the Colbert show, mm-hmm. uh, to places where uh, average non you know, people that are not political junkies like we are. And that's yeah. that is our blind spot is you and I are up to our necks in it every single day. We watch all the shows. You listen to all the podcasts. Mm-hmm. I'm getting clips from Fox emailed to me <laughs> by yep. colleagues. You need to write this up or here's so and so said this. And and we just know we know what Tucker Carlson says every night. Right. We know what Laura Ingram said last night. Mm hmm. And we have videos of it and we're clipping it and it's just up to our eyeballs in this stuff. But mm-hmm. most Americans, and this is the part that we forget, do not care about politics. I mean, they just don't. And they don't remember. I mean, we're going through now at Crooks and Liars. This is, and this is political junkies. These are my colleagues at Crooks and Liars. Mm-hmm. We're going through our archives just for this year. And we're writing up Crookie Awards. And we ran them last weekend and we're going to run them this weekend, the best and worst of 2021 from our archives. And the stuff from January that all of us have just forgotten in the fire hose of news that comes at us every day and realizing, oh, wait, there was a female Republican congresswoman at the January 6th rally who literally gave a Nazi speech. 
Mary Miller. I forgot all about her. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, you know, <coughs> Mark Levin before January 6th comes out on his show and starts talking about, you know, the media doesn't choose the president. <laughs> right. Right. And really, Congress needs to get their act together because this election was stolen. And he never once mentions the voters. Not one time. He goes on for eight minutes talking about the media doesn't choose the president. And just because the media announced who won on election night doesn't mean it's true. Never once mentioning the voters. Mm -hmm. We're counting votes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what elections are. And that, and fast forward to this week where Rand Paul explains why it why it's so terrible that Democrats are doing this underhanded thing and does this long description on Twitter. And what he describes is collecting votes and counting them. Right. <laughs> How dare Democrats try to get people to vote? Right. <laughs> right. right. So, you know, as I, put, as I put on my post, Rand Paul, elections, how do they work? Well, and and just I'm speaking now from memory. I can't pin it down exactly like you can. But in the space of one year, mm -hmm. um, the never Trump folks who have a very large um, uh, bullhorn mm -hmm. have gone from why the hell are Democrats calling what's going on with Republican elections and stuff like that? Jim Crow 2.0. It is not Jim Crow 2.0. I mean, yeah, it's bad. It's kind of bad, but it's not Jim Crow 2. Well, you know, it's these Democrats, these liberals who exaggerate everything. Jump forward 10 months. You know, the problem with liberals is they don't take the threat from the right seriously. <laughs> it's really, really, really bad. And if Democrats were serious, they'd do some stuff about it, like blah, 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 all of yeah. which I agree with. But it's like, God damn. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it's you, 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 you aren't even listening to your own propaganda. It's just... Whatever it is, it's it's Drift Glass's fault and it's Blue yes, Gal's right, fault. Right. Either Drift Glass and Blue Gal are exaggerating the threat from the, the right, calling it Jim Crow 2.0, or we're not taking it seriously because yeah. we're not out in the street. I don't have a vote in Congress. I can't get Joe Manchin to do anything. You can surround him by protesters, you can you can you know tie up his yacht, you can call him an asshole, you can do whatever you want. He's not gonna budge, he's not gonna change a thing. So this I think idea. we have a little bit of that magical thinking going on on the left too. Yeah. Of if only if only we had a different president than we have, everything would work out. Sure. I, I saw. Know. I've seen tweets yeah. like that, and um, I, I I won't. I'll mention this one because I commented on it. Uh, uh, there was a woman on Twitter saying, "You know, Elizabeth Warren wouldn't put up with this mansion and cinema BS." Yeah. And uh -huh. the replies that this person on Twitter got. We're all from Warren voters, right? Saying, "Do you remember the snake emojis? Right? Do you Do remember you Pocahontas? Oh, Do you that's remember?" Right. <laughs> it's like that's right. Not only that, but if you think that Elizabeth Warren had a magic wand that she could wave and make Mansion and Cinema vote exactly the way she wants them to, mm -hmm. but what gets me the most irked about those kind of comments is they t they totally erase what Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are accomplishing. Are, exactly. Are already doing, which is a considerable they amount. Put their nose down and got to work. Right. And they got, you know, basically control over the Joe Biden economic agenda. Right. And if you think that's nothing and that it would be better if we had so-and-so as president waving a magic wand to make Joe Manchin vote exactly the way we want him to, mm -hmm. because it really what it is is Joe Biden is just weak. Right, he's just weak. Oh, he's weak, or he's hostage to the left. Yeah, or he's—I don't know <laughs> what. But it's all. It's again. It's it's never a matter of you no. Know, the problem is that the Republican Party, from top to bottom, is full of traitors and bigots and imbeciles and lunatics. And That's people the real who do nothing but formulate Fox News talking points and right. Fox News uh, sound bites, and, so they and can the, get reelected. And the handful of no the people policies. in the middle. <laughs> The, the tiny sliver of people in the middle who who are wildly disproportionate, uh, disproportionately represented on the news, on cable mm -hmm, news, mm -hmm. uh, as I'm repeating myself now, I realize, cannot bring themselves to say the left was right. Right. Because identifying as lefty, liberal, lefty, lefty is tantamount. Career suicide. It's career, well, you know, it's, <laughs> it it's filthy. It's dirty. It's it's perverse. It's awful. I wrote and this about biased and it's biased. Yeah. Well, I, I wrote this about Andrew Sullivan, you know, a decade ago, which is 
he went down all these things he believes in and he kept saying, but I'm not a liberal, but blah, blah, blah. But I'm not a liberal. I'm not one of those lefty liberals. Of course not. You're a special man. You're a special, special <laughs> person. You're a unique political minotaur never before existed in, in, in the world because according to, to all of these people, but according to, you know, Andrew Sullivan back in the day, liberal wasn't a political designation. Liberal was someone who doesn't get invited onto television. Right. Someone who right. doesn't get invited to talk on Bill Maher. Someone who doesn't get invited to write for the New Yorker. Someone who who is lives in an impoverished um, ghetto of the media that they can never leave because they're liberal and liberals are stinky. And that's what it means to be a liberal. It means you are self-identifying as someone who will never, ever get the spotlight because the people who control the spotlight consider liberals to be stinky and bad but, and awful. But drip and, class, drip class, this is what we were talking about the other night before mm -hmm. I crashed into a coma, <laughs> which was, I said to you, you know, not only is it, is it that the career suicide part of it, but now we have the actual threat of violence yes. against us. Yes, we do. Uh -huh. If we speak out or have a, have a bumper sticker. I mean, there are places where it used to be, you couldn't get a job in a small town in certain parts of the country. If you had a democratic bumper sticker on your car, yep. now you have to worry about getting shot at in some places um, there's a wonderful thread that um, Eric Swalwell put up today engaging with a man who had threatened his life on Twitter or on, Inst on Instagram, maybe. Anyway, wherever it was, he put it on Twitter, the whole exchange, and chatted with this guy to try to find out where he is and what his last name is and out him so he can report him to the authorities. Because he told Eric Swalwell that our Eric Swalwell is a traitor who should be shot and hung. Mm -hmm. And that's the disc that's where we're at right now with our politics. Right. And I said to you, that makes us the silenced majority. Silenced. And you silenced said majority. silenced. You corrected me. You said that's no, right. it makes us the silenced majority. That's right. Exactly right. And we so are... we've got to silently go to the voting booth <laughs> and vote these mofos out. Right. Well, and you know, every poll shows that Democratic ideas have have enormous 70, popularity. Seventy, eighty percent popularity. Yeah. yeah. So we have we have majority support when it comes to ideas. So what but is we it don't that... necessarily have majority support when it comes to I'm going to go show up at the polls and vote. No, but it's also a, a matter of it's also a matter of representation. I hate to use that term, but it really is a matter of in this case representation. How mm -hmm. many actual liberals do you know that show up on Meet the Press? Mm -hmm. Show up and mm -hmm. face the nation. Show up and 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 talk as bluntly and honestly about the real problem to Chuck Todd's big dumb face as we talk on this podcast. The answer is zero. There's nobody well, out there saying the problem uh, over and over again. The problem with this country is the fucking Republican Party. Dirk Les, let's not erase Nicole Hannah Jones, who was on last Sunday on Meet the Press and did tell Chuck Todd. Yes, she did. That the white is silent. And yes, you sat did. there, Chuck Todd, and said, parents want this and, and African-American parents want that. Right. That's absolutely true. And that she flattened him righteously. Yeah. Now, And she's I, got the number one book in America. Yeah. You know, she's not erased. I, I'm not. Not by us, certainly. I'm yeah. not disagreeing with you. I'm saying, yeah. and and think now how notable that is in your mind. Yeah, well, it is. It that is. One, and it remember that one time higher. that one person that one time. called Chuck Todd out? <laughs> Yeah, and that'll never happen yeah. again because yeah. it 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 is not in their corporate media heart to mm -hmm. continue to permit this to happen. And I'm glad, that, like like a well toned, well trained fighter, she was ready for the opening. Right, she was, and she was ready to jump on the opening and take advantage of the opportunity that was presented to her. But I guarantee you, Chuck Todd did not invite her on to punch him. No, <laughs> at he, all. he didn't. It nope. caught him by surprise. And that is the that is the tragedy of American political media is they don't but it want is anyone really, really important for for us to acknowledge that there's a racial component to this whole argument. And if you think, folks, that Drift Glass and I are tired of not having a quote unquote voice, <laughs> I know we're two white educated people who yeah. have way more of a voice and way more privilege than a yeah. lot of people do. And it's based on color. Absolutely. Um, so, and, and I want to add to that, mm -hmm. that the way we have our voice is by inventing a podcast. Yes. And just sticking with it for 12 years. 12 years. 
um, on on equipment donated to us by kind users and kind <laughs> exactly. listeners. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's, yeah. It is not like we're getting invited anywhere. We're not certain. No. Our own, the, the Coastal Liberal podcast don't, don't have anything to do with the Midwest. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like a seller's market at this point. You know, we're just about the only game in town. Um, and the reason we're, but the reason we had those opportunities is because we do understand our privilege. Right. We had the time to do this and we had the, the deep, deep experience of blogging for all those years and writing for yeah. all those years. And, um, and having some tech experience. I mean, both, yeah. I was the help desk person. You ran a computer department, department. Yeah. at an academic institution. And so we weren't afraid to say, well, how does this sound thing work? And let's find yeah. out and find the tools to do it. But, but, and we, you and I didn't have to work three jobs. No, exactly. Know, d- and didn't yeah. have to, you know, just to keep our head above water. We, d- we were, yeah. you know, we recognize the, the privilege we have. We recognize, recognize the limitations we have. We recognize how much this podcast we, is our I'm job. Laughing. I'm laughing because you said we didn't have to work three jobs. We didn't work three jobs because we really didn't mind being poor. No. <laughs> I mean, no. We but, weren't looking. We weren't looking for a six-figure income. <laughs> no, but that's and that's the thing. This yeah. is not a. Um, this yeah. is not a, a 1990s software company where our goal is to sell off to Microsoft. Right. Exactly. You know, let's get yeah. just big enough to make a million dollars to sell it to Microsoft. No, this is our way of talking in our vocabulary, in our shared listeners and our vocabulary about the world around us, what's going on, why it's happening, and why mm-hmm. you don't see this talked about in this way anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think there's some value in that. Mm-hmm. But it's not like, and then once we get big, we can be invited on the Meet the Press and Chuck Todd will be our friend. No, <laughs> that is not the goal. That has never been the goal. It, what we, When you hear me talking about that, what I'm talking about is the tragedy and that we can't our voices are not allowed in the mainstream conversation because mm-hmm. what we have to say is so terrifying and so transgressive and so simple and so obvious that there's a whole universe built just to keep our voices out. That's that's the reason why the mainstream press exists is to keep people like us out of the conversation because what we have to say and how we have to say it fucks them up terribly. And it's it's not just us. It's all the liberal podcasters we know. It's all the liberal bloggers we know. It's all the people you work with, the crooks and liars. None of the folks who talk the way we talk about the things we talk about are welcome anywhere inside the Beltway. And they certainly don't want to talk about us in the Beltway adjacent places like the Bulwark, which mm-hmm. has hot and cold running people heading over to MSNBC every hour on the hour. It might mm-hmm. as well just be another a, a, a wing of MSNBC. That's how tightly they're wrapped together. And there has to be, there should be. This is the this is the whole impetus behind the liberal blogosphere. Going right. back to two thousand, it's right. there has to be another set of people talking about the same things, honestly, in the face of this over oh, this tidal wave of bullshit from the the when mainstream we know press. We're being lied into war. Yes, yes. <laughs> there has to be somebody saying, "No, wait a minute, this is bullshit." Yeah. And there was, and those people turned out to be right. And they never forgiven us for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> never. Right. And they're never going to forgive us for it. So well, moving but those on. Were, that was the era of hippie punching drift glass. Oh, it was. It was. And I did want to talk about that for one minute, which I realize means three minutes. So um, I was listening to an, an exchange on uh, on a Bulwark podcast between Tim Miller, who you know as the San Francisco gay man bond dad, uh, cool, hip, conservative uncle on MSNBC. And who's on there, you know, every two minutes you look up, there's Tim Miller. Hey, look, he's on here. He's on here. He's, he's a bulwark guy and he's over there. Him and Perry Bacon Jr. were having a conversation about mostly parenthood and both being parents of young children and the balance between diversity in the classroom versus I'd like them to go to a school that, that has a lot of people like them versus exposed to people or not. It was a very dad conversation. So Mm -hmm. that's great. Good for them. But in the middle of that conversation, um, Tim Miller stumbled and halted his way through a discussion of the corporate media uh, doesn't want to have people on the air uh, who are, you know, talking about liberal stuff, which is true. And and great credit to him for saying that. And that to get credibility, you have to have the false balance. You have to invent something on the left to be mad about. And he's, and the last sentence is the one I'm going to focus on, which is, I think, um, Jonathan V. Last, who's one of his fellow bulwarkers, called it hippie punching to get a little bit of credit. <laughs> so he wants to credit JVL, a bulwark podcaster, a bulwark writer, with a 
the way I listened to it, the way I heard it was inventing this very cool phrase called hippie punching. <laughs> <clears throat> and I just thought, wow. Where's Tim Miller been for 20 years? <laughs> He's been listening to the Weekly Standard. He's been running Republican <laughs> political campaigns. He's been driving around political candidates. And that's the part that that really snagged my ear. It didn't make me mad, but it made me it made me think these people have never listened to us. Yeah. At all. They, at they, all. They are not aware or interested in, in the fact that we exist at all. And I did a little research because it's like, but but we liberals use that phrase all the time. It, mm-hmm. it wasn't coined by some bulwark guy two weeks ago. <laughs> I right, swear it wasn't. It was, and I went back it just, and I found, it shows you the silo. Well, yeah. Yeah. That, the silo that he lives in. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. And I, I know I've said this on some podcast or some tweet or a, a blog post I wrote. It all runs together in my head after a while. But the way the right understands the left is by listening to Rush Limbaugh. Uh-huh. That's all that they know about us. All that they believe about us. All of the libtard feminazi the bullshit they believe. The- Oh, the liberals, oh, oh. those terrible liberals, and their terrible, terrible, hating yeah. America attitude. Yeah. For 30... And after that, it's Laura Ingram, right. the left. Right. Yes. But for 30 yeah. fucking years, the rubes and the and the mopes listened to Rush Limbaugh, mm-hmm. and the elite listened to Bill Crystal, and, you know, who were all they were doing at the elite level was doing the polysyllabic version of what Rush Limbaugh did yes, for the morons. Right. Right. That's all they, right. they, they all believe the same thing. The liberals are terrible, we're monstrous, we're evil. And they wrote books to that effect, and they had TV shows to that effect, and they had radio shows to that effect, and they really soaked it in. And they never actually listened to anything we were we were saying. During all the time we were warning them that you're going down the rat hole, your head, your whole party is being dragged into a fascist dead end that you will never escape from that will screw us all. They never listened to a word we were saying. So they, I'm sure t- t- Tim Miller genuinely believes that JVL thought up this really cool phrase just a couple of <laughs> weeks ago. punching. <laughs> and he didn't. But- the reverse is also true. The way we know about Republicans, the way we mm-hmm. know about conservatives is we've been monitoring Rush Limbaugh for 30 years. We mm-hmm. were monitoring all the shit they were saying and doing. So mm-hmm. we know that's their soul. That's who they love. That's who they follow. That's who they were popular. We monitored uh, Weekly Standard and the National Review. We know what these people think. It's not a mystery to us. It's not mm-hmm. surprising when they do the things they do. Um, and the thing that cracked me up was tracking this particular phrase back to when it broke into the mainstream press. I'm sure it was going on during the Bush administration. It broke into the mainstream press when a friend of yours named Susan Madrak. Susie Madrak of Crooks and Liars. Crooks and Liars back in September of 2010 confronted David Axelrod. (laughs) Accuses White House of hippie punching. Yeah. And Susie Madrak said, we're the girl you take under the bleachers, but you won't be seen with in the light of day. Um, basically, you know, we, we want your support, but we don't want to acknowledge you exist. Right. You right. liberals. This is also the period of time and the article when Robert Gibbs recently pilloried the quote unquote professional left. Yes. For being overly critical of the White House. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I've, and Susie Madrek said, this is again, it's a decade ago. And, you, and what's so funny is the professional left were dirty hippie bloggers. That's what right. they were. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Right. Right. Um, you want us to help you. The first thing I would suggest is enough of the hippie punching, Madrak added. Mm-hmm. We're the girl you take under the bleachers, but won't be seen with in the light of day. Madrak replied to Axelrod with missing the point. The criticism of the left made it tougher for bloggers like herself to motivate the base. Don't make our jobs harder, she said. Because mm-hmm. we're trying to get the vote out for you. Yes. This is a sliver of a fight from a decade ago mm-hmm. that all of us listening and all of us blogging and all of us podcasting were deeply involved with mm-hmm. long before that ever happened. Yeah. It was just a moment in time. But yeah. a decade later, these guys at the um, Bulwark think they've discovered a brand new phrase. And isn't it clever how they coined this clever phrase called hippie punching? They didn't. But as they stumble into the universe of realizing how fucked up their party was, mm-hmm. this is going to happen more and more and more. Mm-hmm. They 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 are going to appropriate our vocabulary. They're going to appropriate our criticism. They're going to appropriate our perspective on their former party, which I don't mm-hmm. have a problem with any of that. Mm-hmm. What I have a huge problem with is them also pretending that we don't exist. Right. Or right. that Joe Manchin is still the answer to all of their prayers. Or walking into our garden and say, mine now. Mine. It's all mine. <laughs> mine. <laughs> Anyway, that's my uh, two cents. All on right. The I got to get to this Candace Owens Trump yeah. interview. 
please. Which, you know, most of you have heard about Trump. And I totally agree with Charlie Pierce on this, that Trump heard Biden compliment him and his little tiny narcissistic brain <laughs> flipped. And so now vaccines are good because I'm getting compliments for all the good that I've done being vaccinated and I've had the booster and, you know, there's two people over there booing me, but you know, no, 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 you know, and I'm mm-hmm. not for mandates or anything, no, but no. I've been vaxxed and people that aren't, aren't vaxxed are the ones that are going to the hospital and dying. Candace Owens. And she's sitting there going, Oh, <laughs> yeah. Trying to because push a this was not out. the interview no. she expected to have. No, no. So you've probably heard about all of that. What you may not have heard is that um, the Daily Wire, which is where Candace Owens works, uh, wanted uh, this Trump interview was going to be a real feather in Candace Owens' cap and in mm-hmm. the Daily Wire's cap. Sure. So much so that they put the interview behind a paywall initially. And you had to become a $12 or $20 a month member of Daily Wire to hear this interview. It's exclusive, Drift Glass. Mm, wow, a Style Trump exclusive interview. I want to hear that. <laughs> and there was such a backlash, not, you know, with no sense of irony, did conservatives come out and say, but we want it for free. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> because socialism. <laughs> yeah. And I, I believe my comment when he told me was I dropped into my threatening conservative voice going, hey, brother, freedom isn't free. <laughs> well, the comments that people got were, I love President Trump and Candace, but can't afford to pay. Wish this stuff was not subscription. It should be out there for the masses to hear. Mm-hmm. And one, and then one person replied to that saying, I will not pay for information ever. Uh-huh. You know, if you will not pay for information ever, you're paying. Yes. Yes, you are. Because they've got you and, and you're... They're if they know they can lie to you because the information's quote unquote free, you're mm-hmm. paying. Yeah. But the message is I will not pay for information ever. Freedom of speech, remember. <laughs> so freedom of speech means I get free content on the internet. That's well, what and, freedom of speech means. And as a brief aside, this is this is what the Illinois Policy Institute figured out a couple of years ago. Absolutely. Years ago, which yep. was if the if local crackpot billionaires set up this white paper factory of libertarian conservative bullshit Mm -hmm. and they just crank out free content for For newspapers newspapers that are the newspapers are themselves busy firing staff firing Mm -hmm. photographers shuttering offices and they 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 want to keep you know something happening between the sports page and the obituaries and they want to keep their octogenarian you know wing nut audience happy they will take whatever the hell the Illinois policy institute offers for free right and double spaced and they can scan it into their column header Boom, creator done. yeah they're done yeah it's and one less thing there's a huge price to be paid for free stuff free from the right. stuff yeah. exactly and you're you're saying you're willing to be lied to because that's what they're going to do and <laughs> freedom of speech remember so if very quickly um daily wire had to take this uh interview out from under the paywall and <laughs> Wow. I'm sorry. I just think this is they so funny. They fell to pressure from, from... They fell to pressure from big socialism. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so, yes, then Trump correctly told Owens that the vaccine works. And uh, <laughs> that's when Alex Jones comes into the story. Alex Jones! Are you yes. kidding me? <laughs> Alex Jones is promising to reveal dirt on Trump because of the va- over the vaccines. And... Uh, You know it's a big deal, Drift Glass, because Alex specifically notes that the dirt is from people who are closer to Trump than Roger Stone. This is not from Roger Stone. (laughs) Alex Jones. He paid a hooker some money to keep her mouth shut. You know that? You heard that? (laughs) I got the files. I got all the files. It's so true. At, my point being, any idiot can do this. He paid a, any paid idiot can be Alex Jones. Star. Did you know that? Yeah. Paid a porn star. Oh, paid my God. Was breaking. So, uh, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. There's trouble in paradise. And yeah, as well. I said, the primers are going to be lit. And if you'd like to know how all this trouble in paradise is going to end, you just subscribe to uh, the Professional Left After Dark, which is our <laughs> premium 
product. We don't have that. Drift no, we don't have that. We don't no. have any of that. No, no. no, this, no. Is, this is sorry. This is our podcast. There are many like it, but this one is ours. And it happens <laughs> once a week, every week on a Friday or a Thursday, depending on you know your. Can calendar. I give you one more comment to Candace sure. Owens about her paywall interview with Donald Trump? Mm-hmm. Someone complained that this seems like a grift. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You can just tell when your own ass is on fire, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Something smells funny around here. It smells like poop and hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Dumbass. Dumbass. Your well, ass you is know. on fire. Yeah. Yeah. A fire you set, by the way, and then stuck your ass right in it. Man. All right. You want to do a news roundup? Me. Yeah. Let's do a news roundup. The U.S. has broken its own daily record for COVID cases. U.S. COVID-19 cases hit their highest level of the pandemic. The U.S. reported 441,278 new COVID-19 cases Tuesday, the highest single-day total, surpassing the previous daily record by nearly 150,000. This is spreading like wildfire. I sure hope people are getting vaxxed and boosted and uh, social distancing and washing your hands and wearing a mask. All the stuff, all the things, you know, and... um. We're, we're stepping up protections around here as well. So, yep. but you know, we're, we're doing all the things and you know, if you do all the things and you get it, you, you know what? People get the flu. Yeah. It, this, this happens. This, this is, it's not, it's, it's not, not a moral Reagan's... judgment. If you get it, if you've actually taken precaution, every precaution yeah. you can, we understand that. This is not Reagan's peace shield that will keep you safe <laughs> no. at all times from everything. But hopefully but, it'll keep you out of the hospital and keep you from dying. Right, which is all I can really ask from medical science. Um, after the Ghislaine Maxwell verdict came in, Fox News interviewed Brett Tolman, a former federal prosecutor. Tolman immediately castigated the Department of Justice for not prosecuting Hunter Biden for his laptop contents. Quick, shiny object over there. Let's look <laughs> over there. That shiny thing. Did he get into any detail about what is illegal about the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop besides drug use? You know, legal details is not what they do on Fox. <laughs> it's mostly tits, ass, and look over there. Yeah, so. well, and all you have, it's the the programming. All you have to say is Hunter Biden's laptop. <gasps> and I know it's what like Solyndra and Benghazi. <gasps> Baby parts. And Seth Rich for a while until they threatened to get sue them. And mm-hmm. let's, you know, the, the, uh, um, the computer company that counted votes and is suing them. Dominion. Dominion, And yes, it's just yes. like Dominion. I mean, it's there are brainwashing words that are multisyllabic, whether it's a term or a word, and they use it. And critical race theory is the latest one. And Hunter Biden's laptop. And it is just there. Hillary's emails, but her emails, it's just there so they can snap their fingers and put their audience into an immediate mental state yeah. to be fearful and hateful and on the defensive. And it doesn't matter what you say after Hunter Biden's laptop because no. your audience has been programmed yeah, they, by those words. There are a bunch of dimwit winter soldiers and Fox News holds a little red book with the magic yeah. words in it. Mm-hmm. And you recite the magic words in the right order and it's ready to comply. You know, yeah. they're just that's yeah. when we when I call them reprogrammable meat bags, I mean, literally reprogrammable. You can tell them anything you want on a Monday. Reverse yourself by Wednesday, and they will never notice that they've changed their mind 180. You and I need to do an audio of the Winter Soldier and and those words being read to him, and we need to do Solyndra, Benghazi, okay. Butter That's Emails, fair. Hunter Biden's laptop, gotcha. and then he says, ready to comply. This is your brain on Fox News. I will be happy to do that. Biden conceded that his efforts to expand COVID-19 testing capacity is not enough. It's clearly not enough adding that the long testing lines over Christmas weekend show that we have more work to do. The Biden administration also announced plans to order 500 million at-home test kits, which officials expect the free test to be available as early as January during a meeting between state leaders and members of his COVID-19 response team, which he actually has a COVID-19 response team, by the way. Yeah. Biden added, I wish I had thought about ordering a half a billion tests two months ago before the recent surge. Mm -hmm. He makes mistakes. And then he takes action to fix it. And then he takes responsibility for his mistakes. And he mistakes. takes responsibility for it. And wow. that's what we thats what we can expect from this president. That's, that's what we should expect from any president. I any take no responsibility official. except maybe, you know, maybe bleach and light and disinfectant. Yeah. I agree. 
biggest crowds ever, period. Yes. Uh, right. Joe Biden also has confirmed more judges to the federal bench in 2021 than any first year president since Ronald Reagan. Yay. Yay. JetBlue canceled 1,280 flights through mid-January due to the expected COVID spike. And we would like to knock on wood, wish a happy 100th birthday to Miss Betty White, who is awesome in every way that a person can be awesome. The National Retail Federation said early in December that holiday sales were on track to beat its already record-breaking forecast for an increase of 8.5 to 10.5 percent compared to the year-ago period. Holiday sales increased 8.2% in 2020 when shoppers locked down during the early part of the pandemic splurged on pajamas and home goods, mostly online. The group expects that online and other non-store sales, which are included in the total, will increase between 11 and 15%. The numbers exclude automobile dealers, gasoline stations, and restaurants. Holiday sales have averaged gains of 4.4% over the last five years, according to the group. This year, it was 8.2%. Biden boom. That's all I'm saying. Biden boom. Biden boom. Uh, An Oklahoma bill gives parents the right to have a book removed from the school library. Under Senate Bill 1142, if just one parent objects to a book, it must be removed within 30 days. If it's not, the librarian must be fired and cannot work for any public school for two years. Parents can also collect at least a $10,000 per day fine from the school district if the book is not removed as requested. So, number one on my list, get the Bible out of the out of the library. Right. Everyone's mm-hmm. saying we're going to go object to the Bible being in school sure. library. Mm-hmm. And then, I, you know, anything by bill, James Dobson's got to go. <laughs> that bill hasn't passed, but no. it is the, it, it is the, that is the sound of the wolf getting closer and closer to the door. Mhm. Mhm. Um in local news, this cracked me up. I read it in the Illinois Times last week. Uh, and it was also in the SJR, a hilarious fight has broken out between uh, the mayor, locally the mayor, and the Springfield Airport Authority over how much the city owes the airport in returned tax revenue. Um, Now, these things are normally framed in very polite Midwest niceties, but not this time. Oh, no. (laughs) This time. Our mayor is about three feet tall. And he just wants to read a little speech off a post-it note about how much Springfield means to him. The city of how, Springfield means so much to me. You know, my dad was the mayor here. So, you know, <laughs> back in the good old days. That's all he wants. And, the Springfield, he wants. and the Springfield Air Force Authority, um, the, the names of the people I will omit. You can look the story up if you want. But it's they're like, fuck you. You owe us money. Where's my fucking money, you asshole? You call this leadership? God damn, we have been asking for money for two years now. Get off your at, and it's like, oh man, okay, wow. I recognize this. <laughs> this is Chicago politics, <laughs> and it's out in the open, and, uh, and all these people know each other, and they've been around Springfield. Oh, forever, and they've been and in have, the diner together. Oh yeah, they go and to the same diner for pancakes. Second, third generation families who Absolutely. all know each other, all established, and they're like, oh man. So I'm just I'm reminded of the Godfather, where you know every few years this has to happen. You know, yeah. Right. There, there has to be a bloodbath and, you know, everybody just, you know, every few years you have to have one of these these fights. And it's just hilarious to see it, you know, playing out in the uh, in the local newspaper. I swear to on the souls of my grandchildren mm-hmm. <laughs> that I'll get my fucking money for the airport. <laughs> anyway, local news can be hilarious sometimes, oh my uh, especially gosh. when it's, it, it involves aggrieved um, egos and people who have no fear about saying fuck you in the local paper because right. what are you going to do? Take the take my house and my business away from me? I'm, yeah. I've been here three generations. You can't do a goddamn thing to me. Like, all right, more more of that, please. I kind of like that. <laughs> Each week we post to our Facebook page and website and Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Digi. 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 Kurt, one of Digi's humans, tells us that Digi is pronounced with a soft G. He is a polydactyl, many toes. Oh, many that's toes. so wonderful. Yes. And has a he is the liege lord to Kurt's daughter, Hannah. Also, he would like to shake your hand with his oh, very and, big hand. And Kurt contacted me and asked me if mentioning that Hannah has, has been had just gotten engaged to her boyfriend would move the uh, kitty closer to the top of the list. I said, man, just send money. Everything's possible. You know? <laughs> Congratulations, Hannah. That's wonderful news. Congratulations, Hannah. Congratulations, Kurt. Congratulations, DG. I will shake your hand next time I see you. Yes, and DG has many toes. That's wonderful. DG eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsored drift glass, 
I don't know if you know this, but the freshly poured family of brands uh-huh. is branching out, and they now have freshly poured cat litter. <gasps> this is exciting news. This is very <laughs> exciting. I, I think um, freshly scooped and freshly poured um, would yeah. be, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm right there. They're Where, all for I... it. They're all for uh, it. Because if if your cat will sit by the litter box and go, I'm not using this thing. What are you, nuts? I want yeah. freshly scooped and freshly poured cat litter. Mm-hmm. But. When we, when we talk about freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor, of course, DG eats that. And whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit DG and, and DG is reaching out a hand to you with many toes. Please shake my hand at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag jail to joy. Or just get him out of there. Yeah, already. Gotta go. Already. Now, now that, that's a good New Year's resolution for Joe Biden. Fired to joy. We all know why this is taking so long because he can only be fired by the board and the board has right. to be is full of Republicans who can only mm-hmm. be replaced under certain conditions. And Biden is replacing him as fast as he can. And once he does that, to joy is gone. Mm-hmm. He's doing a lot of harm while he's in there. He's, of course, you know, c- committed all kinds of uh, violations of ethics and invested in things that, you know, well, benefit. He's a com- huge conflict of interest. Yes. Yeah. He's a walking conflict of interest and he's still there and mm-hmm. we should get rid of him as expeditiously as possible. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and we love our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Thank you this, to everyone who's donated or written in or done anything for us this year. Thank you, Tammy, for creating our website and keeping our Patreon going. And uh, she's been our angel nerd. We're grateful to her. Thank you uh, for listening and being there for us in 2021. We're looking forward to the coming year with the midterms and uh, getting it done again. And, the, and thank you even to our critics who we do, we do read your emails. That's all I'll say. <laughs> well, I don't, I think people can save themselves a lot of work of sending a very similar email with a similar argument under a different email address. Oh, well, sure. You know, and think, but, and, and pretending that we got two emails on the same topic when we really, we're, God, we're both editors just, and writers and we can tell, huh. yeah, we I, can I tell that off. you're the same person. I print them off. I hold them up to the light. It's like, there's an awful lot of overlap between these two subjects. <laughs> awful lot. I, I can see awful where you lot. tried to scuff up the serial number a little bit, but yeah. eh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> but, you, but your sentiment has been received. Nice yeah, try. Not, yeah. Nice try. Keep keep trying, Bob. Maybe you'll get, you'll get there somewhere. <laughs> please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen to. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the internet kitties are thrilled that the new Matrix movie focused a lot more attention on the cat. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovin'. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.